Good morning. Uh, today we will be looking at one of these. Uh, this is the Calcard Continuity and Insulation Checker. This is for um, ongoing calibration verification. Uh, but I suppose we should have a quick look at this first. Uh, a legal requirement specified by the IET for all working in electrical fields. By that, I think we're talking about the uh, EAS, the Electrotechnical Assurance Specification. That uh, was 2015, it's now 2020. And that gives us some um, recommendations as to what we should do. Or, or it's uh, it's directing the uh, the CPSs and the professional bodies as to what they should request us to do. Um, if I find my notes quickly, nine point two uh, records demonstrating the consistency and ongoing accuracy of the test instrument. Um, well, that'll be our calibration, wouldn't it? Uh, Appendix three to maintain records over time, cross checking. And checking against other instruments or devices uh, ongoing calibration verification well I suppose that is where this comes in so if the IET are asking us to do this uh, why and where are they dragging that from um, so legislation that might be involved in this uh, we've got pure the provision and use of work equipment regulations uh, and that uh, guides us on pretty much anything we touch and use for work it certainly would include um, tester instruments that we might happen to have um, that we look at calibrating or checking maintaining following manufacturers recommendations so in pure uh, paragraph 5.1 the employer shall ensure work equipment is maintained in an effective state. Well, an effective state is going to be making sure it tells you the right figures when you do a measurement. Uh, 5.2. They should keep and maintain a log. Uh, this could be a maintenance log. Uh, it could be uh, an online check sheet, ongoing verification. Um, it does say on the back of the package in here. Uh, for the purposes of meeting the legislation, record these periodic calibration checks on record sheets or on the CalCard app. So that's where that's coming from. That's coming from Pure. Uh, five point, uh, sorry, six point two. Under inspection in Pure, uh, item two, where equipment could be exposed to conditions which could lead to a deter deterioration which is liable to cause a dangerous situation, it shall be inspected at suitable interval, intervals. So, um, exposed to deterioration. Test instrument in the back of the van, on and off site, uh, damage to the leads, um, damage to the probes, um, damage to the ability of the uh, test instrument to accurately give us readings. Um, when we do a... Uh, uh, calibration check once a year um, we don't have anything ever uh, anything else any other checks in place for another 12 months so doing something like this would give us um, uh, verification and evidence through the working year that our instruments are at least showing the right uh, high ohm and low ohm um, uh, values and we can see whether they're, whether they're starting to drift. Certainly give you uh, an indication as to whether you've got to get that back in for maintenance calibration. Or whether you can extend the calibration dates um, if, you're, if you're not using it that often. Or it's in a really nice environment being able to, to verify it uh, locally. Uh, would, would give you a, a good valid reason for extending that. You might also set yourself up an RCD at home. Uh, which you know the trip times and the, you test your trip side regularly you could ramp test uh, if you if you record these figures against the uh, the results that are, are 
um, obtained when you first bring the instrument back from a calibration that could give you an, uh, an indication if you've got a socket in your workshop and you test the earth loop impedance on that just after you've had your uh, multifunction tester calibrated and you test it on that same socket every month uh, if there's a change it's either in the socket condition or it's in the uh, in the test instrument so this would just um, add an additional level of record keeping and checking to, to verify your instrument every month um, if we're not following the standards uh, that are set out uh, and these might also be um, GS38 uh, the guidance for low voltage test equipment uh, paragraph 30 talks about maintenance suitable maintenance of your test equipment and also electrical safety first uh, gives us guidance note 7 uh, which talks about ongoing um, checking and calibration of our equipment so if we're not doing either of those then we might get caught in the insurance act where the insurance um, provider decide that we're not following the specifications so they would then uh, question whether they were going to pay out in the event of an incident uh, all worth uh, considering keeping records um, keeping evidence that you're uh, complying with the regulations rather than just doing it once a year might be a, a good reason for having something as simple as this uh, these are available um, from CalCard uh, www.calcards.co.uk um, I'll stick a link in the comment uh, Daniel has uh, offered a, um, a short term um, discount code so I'll also stick that in the uh, in the comments as well if you feel like you might uh, might like one um, I think they're a good little bit of kit uh, they've uh, uh, won several awards in 2010 electrical industry awards for innovation um, they're simple all it is is a, um, a resistance card with little uh, resistance features in there a bit thicker than a credit card um, nice and simple go in your test box anyway uh, we'll go on a little bit to investigate what I do just to uh, use these and to document the uh, the readings so I'll be back in a minute Right, now we've had a little look at the, the whys and wherefores of why the CPS want us to get our stuff calibrated and um, why the, what the legal requirements are. Let's have a, uh, just have a, a little run through what I've got. So I've collected up a, a load of uh, old test instruments that I've got kicking about. Uh, we'll start and um, we'll see if we can get that in a position where you can see the screen we'll start with the one that actually gets calibrated so insulation resistance so on my sheet previously I know what it's done before so if I go on to the common tag uh, we're on insulation resistance so we'll start with the uh, 500 ohm 5 meg ohm so this is recording 0.49 and it did 0.49 last time so uh, we'll put that down and the next one 1 meg 0.98 did 0.99 last time so a little bit of a change 2 meg 1.98 did 1.98 last time 2 meg did we do that one 10 meg 9.56 did 9.57 last time and 20 meg 19.63 in 1965 last time now with these they're out on site every day with us they're getting battered about in the back of the van the leads are getting pulled and twisted um, this is just a verification to me that this is within a gnat's whisker 
what it was like the last time I tested it. So continuity this time, 0.25 ohms, same 0.26, it was 0.25 last time. I would say that I've zeroed these leads before I started with, where is he, the little fluke zeroing clip. So it nulls out the, the effect of the leads and the, uh, the GS38 probe sets. So you get a more accurate 0.5 spot on was 0.5 last time. Uh, one ohm spot on. Two ohms 1.99. Minuscule drop, five ohms, four nine seven, four nine eight last time. So that's the big boy. He's the one that gets calibrated every year. I think he's doing it due in June. So that kind of gives me a benchmark for everybody else. Now, as we noted, within. The regulations we're allowed to use other things to check against so we've checked against a card we've checked against a known calibrated unit so the next one on my list is the unit t clamp meter so little clamp meter cheap nasty little leads non gs38 but it's quite handy when you're fault finding and going about the your daily grind so this is only cheap, maybe less than 50 quid. So let's see, see if we can get you propped up so you can see the readings. Now we're looking. So continuity, this one takes a little bit longer. It doesn't have the resolution on the screen, so it's gonna give us 0.2 and we had uh, 0.2 last time. Uh, half an ohm. Gives us spot on half an ohm. One ohm. Spot on. Two ohms. Spot on. Five ohms, five ohms, right, so the insulation resistance readings, we'd normally put a voltage through but this one's going to go through its paces as is, 499, one meg, spot on, two meg, spot on, 10 meg very nearly so one two nine point something no ten point four ten point oh four and the 20 meg go on go on 2003. So for a cheap clamp meter, that is more accurate than the multifunction tester. All right, so button him away. So next on my list, old um, CEM. C -E -M. Multimeter. That's, uh, ba, 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 ba. Can we see that? Oh, I think we can. So, continuity 0.25. Doesn't have the resolution. 0.3. Half an ohm. Again, doesn't have the re resolution, but it's doing 0.5. Uh, 
<coughs> one ohm. One point one. Now I would say that this hasn't been calibrated in years. Where are we? Two to two point two, two point one, uh, five ohms. Five point one. Not bad. Uh, Insulation resistance, for the want of a better, better word, high ohms, 495, uh, 1 meg, 991, 2 meg, 198. Ten ohms, ten point oh one, twenty ohms, twenty point three. Okay, so given that that's a uh, an old meter no, doesn't have any sign of when that might have seen a calibration. Uh, my good old, the trusty 3131 Robin. Now, obviously, this is an analog beastie, so he is going to have some restrictions. One of those being I can't keep the cover open. Let's see if that will help. However, I can. Uh, what are we on? 10. So the ohm range. Um, 0.25. Yeah. 0.5. Pretty good. 1. Pretty good. Two, pretty good. Five ohms, spot on. Of course, the advantage of this is we can trim these, which you can't with um, a modern meter. Uh, right, so insulation resistance, 500 volts. So that's 0 0.5. That's one. That's two. maybe 9.9 .9 something and 20 so this would give us the option to to trim these in as we go through the year if they drift drift out from the cart so i'm going to give that a tick all the way through simply based on the fact that the um the analog doesn't give you such an accurate reading there's no point in me getting finicky about it now what everybody's shouting and dancing about at the moment the fluke fluke t6 1000 brilliant meters i've had the uh the t5 um 600 and the t5 thousand and I, I like these however we need to understand the limitations of these uh these are still a multimeter um they're not a voltage indicator they're not suitable for proving dead um in my view um, however they're very useful for fault finding very useful for clamping um cable cable currents but we need to know its limitations so 0.25 ohms that doesn't have the resolution it's going to tell me it's 0 0.1 0 0.5 ohms again doesn't have the resolution still going to tell me it's one ohm 
but one ohm can't make up its mind whether it's one or two ohms but we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt uh, at two ohms it will tell us it's two ohms and at five ohms it's going to tell us it's six ohms if we go on to the meg ohm range guess what won't do that so line through there they're good they do what they do but actually for testing um, impedant, uh, resistances for a circuit uh, they're nigh on useless I still like it um, impressive one out of the bunch has gone away in his box this little one spot on all the time he's only cheap but he does the business um, I have got other clamp meters, but they don't have the lead sets. They're no good for voltage readings. But anyway, having used your card and having kept your records, you can keep an idea of where you stand throughout the year. Uh, these cards come with a um, thing on the back, so you can actually, if, you, if you're doing it for one um, one instrument, you can record the... Uh, the ones each time you can record the serial number the actual um, Cal card has got a serial number on it as well Which I think is quite good So that does tie it to an individual card and as I haven't put that on there yet I'm going to make a note of that And I'm going to make a note of the date And that is it for another spell. How often you do it is completely up to you. Um, you might want to do it monthly, you might want to do it quarterly, you might not want to do it at all. Uh, you might be happy that your calibration is good. Um, but these do just add a little extra, uh, extra, extra bit of reassurance um, if you're having some spurious readings when you're out on site. Um, they're easy just to throw in your box. There's no no harm. Um, I think about 19, 20 quid for one of these. But I'll post a link to the guy that sells them um, when I put this video up. So the cow card um, helps you be compliant. It helps double check what you've got on your instruments. Uh, gives you a little bit of peace of mind. And um, should the nasty man come knocking, he does give you a formal record that you're doing more than just getting your stuff calibrated once a year. So there we go. Cow card, calibration, um, ongoing calibration verification. And uh, that is it. So thank you very much for bearing with me today. It's been a bit of a, a trek through this. I um, hope you have a good weekend and uh, stay safe.